To simplify the calculation of amplitude in quantum field theory, Feynman introduced some rules. Many of these rules are common to all theory, meaning to all uh, starting Lagrangian. However, uh, some of the rules depend on the Lagrangian itself, and in particular its uh, interaction part. So we are going to give here the Feynman rules for the FIFOR theory we have been using so far. The first rule is that uh, we should draw diagrams for the process we are interested in. So for instance, in the collision, we have two incoming lines and two outgoing lines. And these diagrams are made of vertices, that's a dot here, connecting four lines. And that's because we are in the phi-4 theory, we have four fields uh, interacting at some given point of space-time. The second rule is that each line should be labeled by its associated four momentum k and um, for the calculation of the amplitude we associate a, a propagator in momentum space for each of these lines. The third rule is that to each vertex we associate the value minus i lambda times delta function which ensure that we have conservation of energy momentum at each vertex. The fourth rule is that we integrate over the momenta of internal line. So an internal line is uh, a line connecting two vertices, so that's at least uh, in second order in lambda. Um, in first order in lambda we don't have such internal lines. And the final amplitude should only depend on uh, the initial and final momenta for the uh, process we are interested in. It should not depend on the internal momenta. And that's why uh, in quantum mechanics we have to sum for the amplitude associated to each uh, possibility. And therefore we have to sum over each momentum for internal lines. The fifth rule is that some diagrams have a symmetry factor S. Um, and that happens when uh, we have different ways to connecting internal lines together to the vertices. The th sixth rule is that we have no propagator for external lines, and that's because uh, the external lines on are only here to bring the particles to uh, the collision point uh, or the interaction, and they are not part of the interaction itself. And usually when, for instance, we are interested in a collision process, we don't take into account the external lines. The last rule is that we do not write explicitly the um, uh, delta function ensuring the global uh, conservation of energy momenta between the incoming and the outgoing lines. However, we assume it's always there, and that means that we are only calculating processes which conserve energy momentum uh, between these incoming and outgoing lines. Uh, that's something you should check always before going to the calculation and application of the rules. So let's take as an example the collision of two particles in the first order in lambda. According to rule 3, um, the vertex is proportional to lambda, therefore we only keep uh, diagrams which have only one vertex. Only the first diagram corresponds to a collision between the particles. The other two uh, correspond to different processes, like the interaction with the vacuum and the vacuum uh, fluctuation itself. The second rule tells us to associate a k with each line. So these are given by the uh, incoming and outgoing for momenta. We have k1, k2, k3, k4. Uh, and we should in principle also associate a propagator for each of these lines. But according to uh, rule number six, we have no propagator for external lines. So we uh, don't need to incorporate any propagator here. And that's because we have no internal line. Now, according to rule number three, we also need to associate minus i lambda uh, 2 pi 4 and a delta function for uh, ensuring energy momentum conservation at each vertex, but we have only one vertex and according to the seventh rule uh, we see that we don't need to write explicitly the global energy momentum conservation, uh, therefore we don't need this factor and we only have minus i lambda uh, to take into account. Rule number four tells us that we should sum of our momentum for internal lines, but we have no internal line in this diagram. Rule number five tells us that uh, there should be a symmetry uh, 
uh, factor that's uh, associated to the different way to connect uh, the internal lines to uh, the vertices but here there is no internal line again therefore the symmetry factor is just one then we recover the amplitude for the collision in first order in lambda which we obtained before we can use the same rules um, to get the second order in lambda. In this case, we will have two vertices and therefore there will be internal line to sum over and also symmetry factors associated to them.